This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles, Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Before we get going with today's show, just a little reminder that we just completed the first month of road usage charges for EVs in Aldara. If you haven't paid your RUCs yet, it is time that you did, even if I think the whole system is a bit naff. We start today's show in South Carolina, USA, where Volvo has officially started North American production of its EX90 full-size SUV. While the start of North American production has been delayed multiple times, it was after all first revealed nearly two years ago, the start of US production means that the two most affordable variants, the EX90 Twin Motor Plus with either a six or seven seat configuration, will both be eligible for US federal tax incentives, making them instantly more competitive in the marketplace. But if you're looking for accountability as to where your car's components come from, Volvo might actually be your number one choice. It's just announced that every Volvo EV will now get its very own battery passport, showing where its materials came from and its carbon footprint. Not to be outdone, Kia, whose three-row EV9 is a direct, more affordable competitor to the EX90 in the electric SUV segment, has just also started US EV9 production. Unlike Volvo and plenty other automakers that have struggled to start US production on schedule, Kia's EV9 production line in Georgia has actually started production a little ahead of schedule. Like Volvo, shifting production to the US means that the EV9 can qualify for US federal tax incentives for the first time. But unlike Volvo's EX90 family, every one of Kia's EV9s comes under the $80,000 MSRP price limit on tax credit eligibility. If you're in the market for an EV9 and you're in North America, you might want to consider waiting to benefit from those incentives, but you should also bear in mind that any Korean-made cars still looking for homes are likely to be offered with significant discounts as dealerships shift old inventory. Half a world away in Cologne, Germany, Ford was celebrating the official launch of production for the all-electric Ford Explorer. And while this does now mean Ford is selling two very different vehicles with basically the same name in different parts of the world, the Ford Explorer EV becomes Ford's most affordable European market EV to date. Based on the MEB platform from Volkswagen, its specs are roughly in line with the ID4, with a choice of either 55 kilowatt hour or 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and a choice of rear wheel or all wheel drive. Ford says a second electric model will start production at its newly refurbished Cologne facility, now called the Ford Cologne Electric Vehicle Center, later this year. It will, says Ford, be a sports crossover EV. New reporting from CNBC this week has opened a small can of worms at Tesla after it was disclosed Elon Musk told NVIDIA to prioritise shipments of GPUs to X rather than to Tesla. According to reports, Musk had asked NVIDIA back in December to divert GPUs originally ordered by Tesla to X, and that's led some shareholders to further question if Elon Musk has been paying attention to his fiduciary responsibilities at Tesla. Other emails obtained by CNBC reference Elon Musk's attempting to secure GPUs in order to build the world's largest cluster computer at XAI, another one of his companies. However, to be clear and informed, we should note that Elon Musk has stated that Tesla had not finished the building where its GPUs were destined, so would have been of little use to Tesla at the time they were ready. This is backed up by the fact that Musk has apparently told Nvidia to send orders originally intended for X to Tesla instead, effectively evening out the books. As we like to say, context is queen. 
Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Specialist, Archer Aviation was celebrating this week after it received its official Part 135 certification from the US Federal Aviation Authority for its midnight eVTOL craft. Part 135 certification from the FAA is just one of many steps the company must go through before its aircraft is allowed to fly commercial operations in the US, and in this case proves that it is satisfied various requirements concerning safe flight operations, maintenance schedules, training and parts. Don't think, though, that this means that the Archer Aviation Midnight will be taking off at a Vertiport near you anytime soon. It still has many more certifications to obtain, including its official type approval. But Part 135 certification isn't something to sneeze at, so well done, Archer Aviation. There's been a lot of news reporting in the last few weeks about the seemingly glacial rollout of US federally funded EV charging infrastructure. And that in turn has been used to fuel significant anti-EV FUD, both in certain political spheres, but also generally online. Some of that FUD has been used to claim nobody wants electric vehicles and some of it to claim that the federal government was lying and is disinterested. But in a recent Senate Environment and Public Works Committee hearing into the slow progress being made this week, Shalian Bat, who heads the Federal Highway Administration, criticised the vast amounts of red tape hindering the efforts. Right now, federal highway laws make it difficult to deploy EV fast charging at official rest stops, and individual states are all operating at different speeds when permitting requirements, cooperation and deployment all come into play. That said, he's hopeful most of the blockers will disappear this year and promises dramatically improved charger deployment. Those who follow Tesla's plan to bring fully autonomous driving to the masses through its FSD software will likely know that its latest planned iteration of FSD supervised is a little late. The version, version 12.4.1, was released to Tesla staff earlier this week and, according to Tesla, will roll out to a limited number of customers by the end of the weekend. But while planned rollouts getting delayed is not new in either the automotive or the tech world, what is getting people's attention is the claim from Elon Musk this week that the next two iterations of Tesla full self-driving, which he said could be called version 14 and 15, will be capable of driving for more than a year without requiring human intervention. That is, once, quote, known bugs are fixed, end quote. It's quite the promise, but Elon Musk does have a habit of overhyping what Tesla's full self-driving can actually do. We're heading to the UK next, where Dacia has just launched the refreshed version of its Dacia Spring EV, with a starting price of just under £15,000 sterling. Dacia says the refreshed Dacia Spring will be offered in two different trims, Expression and Extreme, with a choice of 33 or 48 kilowatt motor and a 26.8 kilowatt hour battery pack offering up to 140 miles or 225 kilometers on the WLTP mixed cycle. While many watching will chortle and scoff at the specs and likely note its predecessor's poor crash test rating, it is also worth noting that as a city runabout, this certainly beats a 20-year-old, rusty, polluting hatchback. For a long time, naysayers of electric vehicles have peddled in the oft-debunked myth about electric vehicles being less clean than gasoline. We've debunked it plenty on the channel, showing that even in places where the electrical grid is notoriously dirty, EVs generally still win out. But now if you own an EV in the US, you'll be pleased to know that on average, driving it is responsible for approximately two-thirds of the emissions of even the most fuel-efficient internal combustion engine cars. The news comes from the Union of Concerned Scientists, which has been tracking the emissions associated with driving a car in the US for many years. When it first started examining the impact of driving electric, EVs weren't always the cleanest option. But now they are, and for the first time, it's true for the entirety of the US. It's a good indication that the grid is just getting cleaner and cleaner. 
Sticking with good news from the electrical grid, new data this week shows that during the first quarter of the year, more solar generation was added to the U.S. electrical grid than the nation did in the entirety of 2018. That's according to the Solar Energy Industries Association and analysts Wood McKenzie, which state that nearly 10 gigawatts of new large-scale solar generation was added to the grid in the first quarter with residential solar deployments pushing that total installation to 11.8 gigawatts overall. While new policies in states like California towards feed-in tariffs have lessened the rate of residential solar installs, grid-scale deployments are at an all-time high and U.S. solar manufacturing is as well, with a 71% increase in capacity. And if that wasn't enough, the U.S. DOE has begun deploying solar farms on sites previously reserved for the storage of nuclear weapons, a move that I think we can all get behind. Before I get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should very much check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow your link below and start your journey today. For many years, the auto industry promoted diesel as being the smarter choice for car drivers looking for an economical car, despite knowing full well that diesel engines were responsible for some pretty horrific air pollution. But in recent years, thanks to the Dieselgate scandal and a shift away from diesel towards electric, we've seen demand for diesel drop. And this week, we learned from the U.S. Energy Information Administration that demand for diesel in the U.S. is now at a 26-year low. In addition to automakers swearing off diesel, we have also seen a decline in diesel use across industrial applications, not to mention heating applications. But while some of the decline in oil use is down to it losing popularity among customers. Some analysts suggest it's down to inflation and indicative of a wider drop of oil demand in the future. Either way, fewer gallons of diesel being used is a good thing, no matter the reason behind it. And finally, battery swapping, where you drop out a depleted battery pack and swap in a fully charged one, has often been portrayed by its fans as being essential to the future of EV mass adoption. Yet, save for a few specialist applications, battery swapping really hasn't taken off outside of China, where NIO and a few other companies have leaned heavily into battery swapping as a way of rapidly expanding EV adoption among people who don't have off-street parking. But in recent years, we've seen several concept cars offering battery swaps, including Fiat's 120 concept car from 2020. And this week, we learned that Ford is looking to patent a new battery swap technology for future vehicles. Unlike previous applications where the battery is dropped out from underneath, Ford's application seems to focus on battery swapping without expensive underground swap stations, placing battery packs where the frunk might be on most EVs. It's an interesting idea, but it'd make the centre of gravity a lot higher for any car that used it, and I'm not a fan of that, so what about you? And on that note, we are done for today. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back with a roundup as usual next week. But in the meantime, be sure to check out some other great content on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's just pushed a new video from his trip to Spain driving a fantastic Polestar. And frankly, his review is epic. So go watch it. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite. See you next time.